Welcome to module five of our course. This module is all about activity-based costing. So when we think about overhead, remember the first big chunk of the course we're looking at, job order costing, process costing, activity-based costing, it's all about overhead. Make no mistake here. When we talk about cost, we're talking about material plus labor plus overhead. But really, these different costing methods are focused on overhead. And why is that? Well, when you are uh, uh, costing, the direct material and direct labor costs are known. So we just use the actual direct material and direct labor costs. We don't estimate them. There's no controversy over how to calculate these amounts. These are known and well known to anybody that's in business. They'll know their material and labor costs for sure. It's the overhead costs that have to be estimated. And so the fact that they're estimated has resulted in these different systems for allocating overhead. And one of the systems is activity-based costing. And here's what activity-based costing set. So again, material plus labor plus overhead equals cost. And we use actual material and labor where we must use estimated overhead. And we often use the term how much overhead gets applied. And that's that's the estimated overhead. So let's kind of think about what overhead is. Overhead is con uh, composed of indirect production cost, right? Indirect product cost, indirect factory costs, if you will. So indirect costs of running a factory. So let's, um, let's assume we are a uh, bakery, we make bread, okay? So our, our product costs are like eggs and flour and yeast and whatever else you might put in a bread. Our labor costs are pretty clear too. It's the cost of the baker, right? The, the whatever wages the baker or the baker's assistants are receiving are the labor costs. Now, uh, other costs of owning a bakery that are involved with production. Well, certainly utilities, right? You have to keep the lights on. You have to keep the power on. That's an overhead cost. So that's an indirect factory cost. Indirect labor, the cost uh, of our baker's time when they are cleaning up, when they are setting up, when they're washing. This is not direct labor time. This is uh, indirect labor time and it's overhead time. Uh, also, we have to own a building or pay rent on the building. Let's assume we don't own it. Let's say, assume we pay rent. I'll put in brackets property taxes if we own though. You know, those, those having a a kitchen, uh, you know, a commercial kitchen to, to bake our bread in, a commercial bakery, I guess, uh, it brings with it costs, indirect factory costs. We also have indirect materials. And indirect materials are things like cleaning supplies. You know, you have to clean up. You use Mr. Clean. It's not a direct material. It doesn't actually go into your bread, the Mr. Clean. We certainly hope not, but it's an indirect material. Um, and my list could go on and on. You know, if I have a supervisor that doesn't really bake any bread, supervisor's wages, that would be a, a, an overhead cost. Um, there are so many depreciation of equipment. Maybe I'll put that in as well. And the, the list could go on and on and on. So we have all of these different types of overhead going into our uh, estimated total overhead. And what we've learned our uh, last chapter is we just take that estimated total overhead and divide by the estimated driver for overhead, estimated base. And that might be something like direct labor hours or direct labor cost or machine hours. It might be something like that. Um, and this works well for a lot of companies, but for some companies, they get bad cost information. At the end of the last chapter, we, we did a problem where the overhead was way over or way under applied. It was way off. And if our uh, system is consistently producing data where it's like, way over applied or way under applied, it means we probably got a bad driver and, and perhaps there is no single good driver. So activity-based costing attempts to address this. It says, look, the, the, the thing that drives utilities is probably going to be our baking time, right? The more we bake, the more utilities we use. The thing that drives our supervisor wages is probably going to be direct labor hours. You know, the more 
time I have people working, the more supervisory time there's going to be also. So these are totally different drivers. Um, uh, rent won't be driven by either of those, and rent will have its own driver. So activity-based costing says don't use one driver. Don't just use direct labor hours for everything. Pick different drivers for each type of activity you have. So rather than using one cost driver, activity-based costing says use many. Rather than using one overhead rate, activity-based costing says use many overhead rates. And as we'll learn this chapter, activity-based costing produces more accurate cost data. Now, as we'll also learn this chapter, not many companies use activity-based costing, and the big reason is it's quite expensive. Rather than gathering one bit of data to determine your product cost, you have to gather much, much, much more data, and it can be expensive just gathering that information. So many companies don't use activity-based costing, although in sort of academically, when we look at it, we can say, oh, okay, this is going to produce better estimates, uh, even still, most companies don't go with activity-based costing. So anyway, this chapter is all about using many overhead uh, rates to uh, apply our many different types of overhead. And that's what we're going to learn how to do in each of the questions for this chapter. So stay tuned for the chapter.